Hey guys, welcome to this review and um, we're going to be looking at the Pine Phone 64. Um, I've had this phone for about a year and a half, like uh, over a half a year by now. And kind of like the goal of this is just look at like what I've noticed with this phone, like little things here and there. It's not like a general review um, of, of this phone as a whole. Um, so first thing is about, first thing I wondered when I got this phone was data. Um, if, I put it in, if I put in like an actual SIM card, like what would happen? Like would I be able to text, would I be able to call, would I be able to, you know, uh, use, uh, use the mobile data? And for the most part, all of that is yes, um, you can. Um, calling works perfectly. Uh, texting is not, there's a little caveat to it, but for the, for the most part it works, yes, it, it works. Um, so if I text, um, let's say, hello. There we go. Um, so texting works on this phone, no problem at all. Uh, but if you send images, uh, that actually won't work. Uh, you can't send image. You can't send images to this phone. Um, like if I do, like nothing will happen. Like it won't. It just won't receive anything. Um, so that's one catch to this phone. Uh, but other than the date, like SIM card wise, everything is fine. Everything else is fine. Um, even like, and this is not SIM card related, but even like what I notice is like if I listen to music in my car, um, this, this will actually, like it has Bluetooth and it will actually connect to my, um, my car's uh, radio, whatever it's called. And I can actually like play videos and listen to music on here. Um, obviously the only catch is you can't have the YouTube app. You're going to have to go through your actual browser to YouTube, um, which I mean, it's fine. It'll just, uh, um, drain the battery. <laughs> uh, but yeah, otherwise that SIM card wise, everything is good. Um, next thing is the OS and the environment. So with kind of like, you know, Linux on desktop, you got the different distro you can use, the different distribution of Linux. Uh, but then there's like, there's quite a bit of different um, uh, desktop environments. It's kind of the same thing here. There's different mobile environments that you can use, like Fosh and, and Plasma and a couple of others. And on the same hand, there's also different uh, distros you can have. Um, by default, it comes with Manjaro ARM. Uh, so if you've used Manjaro on your desktop, which I'm like a huge fan of, it's, it's, it's really nice, um, which is ARC-based. Uh, that's what it comes by default. Uh, you, can, you can put others, like even like Ubuntu Touch, um, you can put that on here. Um, and I'll link a video to uh, another video to a person who um, explains how to use jump drive, which is amazing because it's with jump drive it's easier to distro hop on your phone than it is your desktop. Like it's extremely easy. Um, so that's like a huge plus to this. As a hobbyist, this is like definitely your best friend because I kind of have like a nice laptop that I don't really want to mess around with. Um, paid a little too much money for it, so I don't want to like. Yeah, mess around with it. So this is kind of my avenue to Linux right here. This this Pine phone. Um, and so yeah, once you get this phone, um, you're probably going to have like an outdated Manjaro ARM Plasma Mobile uh, version. You really definitely want to upgrade that, um, either to the latest Plasma Mobile or to the latest Fosh um, or to an entirely different OS. I mean, whatever you want, but definitely upgrade it. Um, and I'll link a description, I'll link a video, uh, not a video, um, it's a URL to um, Pine Phone's like, uh, releases, oh sorry, I just got a notification, um, like the latest OS releases of whatever OS you want. Um, yeah, so that link will be in the description. So why I like Fosh over Plasma Mobile, I think Plasma, like KDE, like desktop wise, I think, in my opinion, looks better. Looks wise, I like KDE Plasma more. Um, but actually, on the phone, I would highly recommend Fosh, which is um, GNOME, like modeled after GNOME, um, because the reason why I would recommend Fosh is because um, let's see, if I, you know, typing something on the keyboard, right? But um, sorry, uh, let's say I'm on a browser or texting or whatever the case is and I want to I want to close the keyboard for whatever reason there's a button right here uh, I don't believe mobile has that um, and this button is extremely helpful because sometimes like with the plasma mobile version I'll have the keyboard up and I want it to close for whatever reason you know you know I want the keyboard to close 
what I have to do, but not close the app. Like what I have to do is like I have to close out of the app, um, open the app back up, and then there's the risk of the keyboard just coming back anyways. And it's, it's extremely, extremely, extremely annoying. Um, so for that sole reason, I highly recommend Fosh over mobile. Again, if you want like a more general overview of this phone, there's, there's plenty of videos of like that. Um, I'll probably link a good one to that. Uh, but like this is kind of like the things I've noticed of this phone over the time. Um, so with SIM card and with Fosh versus Plasma Mobile. As a primary phone, no, uh, this is not a good idea. As a hobby phone, this is excellent. Um, I love playing around with this phone. I can try any, like any OS I want. It's really, really cool. One last thing. Um, for the uh, SIM card, I use Mint. Um, I noticed that works. I don't know, maybe there's like some that are not compatible or something. Um, funny thing, Mint said it wasn't compatible, but I tried it on my, like, my personal phone also has Mint, so when I first got this, I put it in, um, and it works fine. If, if you're in the United States and Mint is an option, maybe you want to consider that. It's also really cheap um, if you're getting the Pine phone and you want to put a SIM card in it. Um, all right, yeah, hopefully you found that helpful.